A differential equation is said to be a logistic differential equation if it can be written in this form. So you'll notice that we have uh, p, and on the inside here we have another p, so if you multiply that through you would end up with something quadratic in nature. Um, and a couple of things to note. If we divide both sides by p, we'll end up with what's called the relative growth rate. 1 over p dp dt is equal to a constant times this quantity, which means that the relative growth rate is linear. If you remember from exponential functions, the relative growth rate is constant, so that's how this, is, this differs from an exponential function. M is what's known as the carrying capacity. That's the maximum amount of, let's say, whatever we're dealing with, um, the maximum population that our system can sustain. So if our population starts off less than the carrying capacity, it can grow to that. If our population starts off greater than our carrying capacity, it's overcrowding and will dwindle down to the carrying capacity. Now let's suppose we're given some initial value so that at time zero, P zero, whatever, the population is P zero. We can solve our differential equation through, uh, it actually takes uh, partial fractions, we can solve it and get this equation where, you'll notice we have some familiar con uh, quantities. The k that was in our equation up here matches the k that's down there. The carrying capacity is there, but we have a new term, which is a. And a happens to be the difference of the carrying capacity in the initial population divided by the initial population. A couple of interesting things here. If p is equal to 0, Notice that this factor would be 0, the derivative would be 0, and if p is equal to m, we get m divided by m. We're going to end up with 0 here as a factor. So in both cases, we'll end up with a derivative equal to 0, which means that um, these are equilibrium solutions. The population will remain constant. The population's rate of change is 0. So one of the common um, ways or common phenomena that we model is uh, spread of a disease. Calculus fever is a disease that's spreading through some college campus, and the rate at which it's spreading is given by this differential equation. Now this looks a little bit different than um, the form we had before, but remember I said it was quadratic in nature. Okay? We also know that 10 students are infected at the beginning. So we have a few questions. What is the carrying capacity? Okay, so in order to find out what the carrying capacity is, I'm going to um, write it in the form that we had before because I remember it being k times p times 1 minus p over m. Okay, so this term is going to be k times p. We're going to factor that out. It, that leaves us with 1. We want to write this as p divided by m. Well, this one's actually kind of nice uh, because 0 0.001, if you read it correctly, is 1,000th. So that is really p divided by 1,000. Now, how would I get the denominator if that wasn't so nice? Well, uh, 1 divided by 1,000 is equal to this number. So to get 1,000, you could do just the opposite. You could take 1 divided by 0 0.001, and that would give you 1,000. Now, this is easily read off. Remember, it was k times p times 1 minus p divided by m, which was the carrying capacity. So our carrying capacity is 1,000 students. Um, is the maximum number of students who will obtain this disease or be infected. All right, so the second equation, or second problem, write an equation for the number of students who have been infected with calculus fever t days after the initial group of 10 students were diagnosed. So for this, we get to go to the equation that we've already derived. Here is the formula. Um, p equals m over 1 plus a e to the negative kt, and a is that constant. We know m, we know the initial population, so we can find a, and we plug everything in. So p is equal to 10, there were 10 students who were initially infected. a is 1000 minus 10 over uh, 10, uh, that's 990 divided by 10 is just 99, and k is equal to 0.15. Remember that was the number that was out in front of the p um, in our factored form of the differential equation. So we plug everything in. It's m divided by 1 plus a e to the negative k. That's kind of deceiving. Uh, the k in our differential equation is positive, but this one turns out to be negative, negative 0.15t. So now we have one final question. When will 90% of the students be infected? And this includes those who may have recovered, but of course you never recover from calculus fever. Um, 
when we say 90% of the students, we're talking about 90% of the 1,000 students who will eventually get it. So 90% of 1,000 is 900 students. We want to know when is the population 900. So this is an exercise in solving exponential functions and re related uh, equations. Uh, 900 is equal to what our population that we just found. A little bit of algebra. We're going to multiply by that denominator and at the same time divide by 900. So 900 comes under the 1,000. This goes to the other side. And 1,000 divided by 900 reduces to 10 ninths. If we subtract 1 from both sides, 10 ninths minus 1 is 10 ninths minus 9 ninths, which is 1 ninth. Now we divide both sides by the 99. So e to the negative 0.15t is 1 99 of 1 over 9. One, or 99 times 9 is 891. And so we end up with the opposite, of, or negative 0.15t is the natural log of that number. Uh, well, I can use the property of logarithms. Remember that the natural log of um, an expression is the opposite of its reciprocal. Okay, the opposite of the natural log of its reciprocal. So if I bring this 891 and up to the numerator, that is, take the reciprocal of 1 over 891, we're going to pull a negative out in front of the natural logarithm, which, when I divide both sides by negative 0.15, will reduce. Okay? And this turns out to be 45.28 days until 90% uh, of the students have been infected with calculus fever.